Good evening everyone or a good whatever time of day you're in in your own time zone and um, this is just stunning to see all these people turn up um, I'm not the greatest fan of uh, singing into a computer on a zoom meeting having done so many of them uh, like work focus type meetings so this is a different uh, kind of experience did do some classes and things over the time of the um, pandemic on the zoom so we'll give it a go anyway it just seems funny to be sitting here in a bedroom in my house singing to all these people <laughs> from across the world but there you have it <laughs> times change we can't be around a campfire and um, yeah i'm going to talk about um growing up in the northeast of scotland the singers that i encountered as a young lass who, who um, really influenced me. And I'm going to try and cram in as many ballads um, to sing to you, because there's nothing better um, to illustrate ballads than to actually sing them because they tell their own stories. Uh, if I start with um, a little bit about me, um, I was born in 1954 to an Aberdeen family. My mother's side of the family were all people from D side, um, which you'll all be familiar with, with the uh, recent Queen's funeral stuff going on. Um, I grew up in the kind of family where uh, at every family um, event that happened, um, as soon as the food was over, the singing would start. Um, so I just grew up thinking that everybody sang and everybody told stories and everybody did party pieces. And that was just how life was. And when I was 11, um, my mother had a, a young sister who was actually nearer my age than she is my mum's age. Her name is Lindy Cheen, or she was Lindy Wilson at that time. And some of you might know her if you come from around the Aberdeen area or the northeast of Scotland. She was the, uh, she's a singer in her own right, and she was the editor of The uh, Leopard magazine for many years so she was one of the founder members i believe of the aberdeen folk song club and when i was 11 years old she took me along um, to the folk club on a sunday night as a birthday treat and the guest that night just happened to be jeannie robertson the late great Jeannie Robertson. So for people who don't know who Jeannie Robertson is, um, Jeannie Robertson was a settled uh, traveller from the Scottish traveller, travelling people, um, who'd been living in Aberdeen and who was just an absolutely stunning singer, had a huge repertoire of songs and ballads. Um, and that was my introduction. I think that the Three Gypsies Come to Your Ha Door was the first ballad I heard her sing. And it was kind of a love at first sight thing for me. Um, it was the stories, the drama, the melody, and of course the absolutely superb singing um, that just uh, pulled me in. And so during my teenage years, um, I met and heard and was privileged to hear sing um, Jeannie's daughter, who's called Lucy Higgins, who you've heard somebody speaking about earlier, who was also an absolutely superb traditional singer. And then her nephew, Stanley Robertson, um, started coming to the folk club. You, you, during my teens, really, I was going to the folk club more regularly by then. And Stanley was a regular singer at the folk club, which was in the Guild Hotel, if I remember correctly. And Stanley being Stanley, for people who knew him, was an incredibly generous man who was on kind of a mission to um, pass on the ballad tradition to young people. So myself, um, still being at school, and two or three of my pals, who came to the folk club used to be invited up to his flat he used to live in a big housing scheme called Northfield up in Aberdeen and he would um, tell a story sing us songs play the pipes lots of his family members would be there and they would be reading your fortunes and all sorts of stuff it was it was great fun to be in amongst all these travelers and at that time as I've often told my own um, children Nobody really had tape recorders, um, and except for Arthur Argo, who's another very well-known, I think, founder member of Aberdeen Folk Club. 
um, and he worked for the BBC, so he had a tape recorder that he carried around in a thing like a suitcase, but nobody had tape recorders, so the songs that you learned were either taught just um, from one person to another, just by repetition, or sometimes you were allowed to write the words down as well. But it gave me a very good memory for melodies, um, and that's kind of how I absorbed um, lots and lots of ballads. Um, Stanley and, well, Lizzie and um, Jeannie as well. Jeannie would have died by the time I was 21. I did learn a couple of songs from her when I was sort of 13, 14, that age, but she then got quite unwell. Um, and so Stanley really was the main transmitter of um, ballads and songs. He was like, he was my go-to person. If you needed the words to something, um, you would just ask Stanley if you knew a version of whatever and you'd probably get at least three all written down beautifully and sent to you and Stanley would tell you how to sing them as well as um, just giving you words. So um, Aberdeenshire, a, a great friend of mine uh, who's a former colleague of Ian's or current colleague of Ian's, prof eh, not professor, Dr. Tom Malone, who is the present director of the Elphinstone Institute at Aberdeen University. He's made a map of the northeast of Scotland, that big shoulder that sticks out the top, the top of Scotland. <clears throat> And he put and he's put little pins in it, you know, like these little pins that you drop in on Google Maps um, of all the places in Aberdeen that he's aware of that have ballad names or bothy ballad names. And you just honestly can't see any land for the number of little pins that there are dropped in. And my husband plays a game with me when we're driving anywhere in Aberdeenshire um, where he we pass a road sign and he goes, I bet you don't know a song about that. And I usually do. I normally win that um, game. So that's how huge um, the tradition of bothy ballads, folk songs and big ballads are in this part of the world. And there's sort of real good evidence for this that exists in the great collections that were collected in this area by, first of all, the first one I'll talk about is the, um, the Greg Duncan collection, which uh, was made in the North East. Gavin Greg was a free, uh, was a teacher, a dominee as the column here, schoolmaster at Whitehill up near New Deer right kind of in the middle, slap bang in the middle of the northeast of Scotland. And the Reverend James Bruce Duncan was a free church minister down in the Afford area. Um, this collection, they went, uh, they collected songs and also um, Gavin Gregg was also uh, wrote a column in a local newspaper called the Buchan Observer and he would write about songs that he'd collected in the area and other people would write in and um, giving him more versions of songs. So this collection collected in the early years of the 20th century was um, finally published in its entirety in 1981. Um, through Aberdeen University and the School of Scottish Studies in Edinburgh um, under the editorship of the great scholars Patrick Shuldamshaw and Emily B. Lyle. So that um, collection runs to eight volumes and there's over 3,000 traditional ballads and songs that were still being sung in this area right up until, you know, between the world wars. And then again, a uh, Harvard professor called James Madison Carpenter came over here again between 1929 and 1935 and he drove around in an open topped car. I don't think anybody told him what the weather was like in the northeast of Scotland and he was just um, really posted from one singer to another singer and he collected a huge number of ballads and songs in this area. Sorry that's my um, my computer just pinging with a message. Um, yeah, he he uh, did us a great favour in some ways because 
he he could write music himself so he notated the tunes that went with the songs or the melodies he wrote down every single word the singers sang but he also recorded um snippets of singers usually the first couple of verses of a song on um, wax cylinders and those wax cylinders I would have to say they're not modern high fidelity sound but they've been all transcribed and they now sit in the Cecil Sharp House library on an in an online connection a uh, collection so you can actually go in and search this collection and hear the the singers singing themselves so you pick up a lot of style from that because the style is very important so the first song I want to sing is one that comes from the Carpenter collection um, one of the singers he uh, he recorded was a lady called Belle Duncan uh, who came from Lamhill near Inch and she had a massive number of songs that he he took down from her lots of folk songs but a huge number of what are known as the big ballads so if I sing one to you uh, from her repertoire you maybe get for people who aren't ballad scholars and I know there's many of them online tonight you probably know a whole lot more about ballads than I do but anyway I will sing you um her version of Clyde's Water I just love this song because she's got such a lovely melody that goes to it and it sounds very northeasty to my ear so I'll just find my note I've got my guitar here so I don't sing in impossible keys so I'll have a go at this ballad well he stood at his stable door, came and doon his coal black steed, and looking out his white fingers, his nose began to bleed. Car and car and tell my horse, and me tante my men, and I'll awa to Maggie's boor, and I'll win her she lie doon. O oh, stay at him this night will ye, O oh, bide at him my son, and the best in sheep and the flock I'll dress till you this night. Ah, oh, when I stay at him, mother, ah, oh, when I bide at him, but I'll awa till Maggie's boor, and I'll win there she lie doon. Well, gin ye gang this night, will ye, this night, oh, gin ye gang. In the deepest part in Clyde's water, you'll find my malison. As he's rode o'er yon high, high hill, and doon he on misty glen, the rush that ran in the Clyde's water would I feared a thousand men. Oh, spare me, spare me, Clyde's water. Oh, spare me as I gang. Mark me a wreath ere I return, but spare me as I gang. It's here a dar, yon high, high hill, and doon yon misty glen. And the rush that ran in Clyde's water would have feared a thousand men. Arise, arise, my Maggie dear, arise and let me in. My boots are full with the Clyde's water, and I'm frozen till the skin. He you got me stables a put your tours to stable my steed in. He you got me boors a put your tours to leave my body in. My stables they are full of steeds, and my barns are full of hay. My boors are full of gentlemen.
Man, so ye man be gone till day. Oh, fare ye will, my Maggie dear. Oh, fare ye will, for I, for I've gotten my mother's malice in, in coming here the day. As he read out yon high, high hill, it's high, high blew the wind, and the rush that ran in the clyde's water, Dean O'Willie's cane for him. He's turned his horses, he'd a boot, to catch his cane again. But the rush that ran in the clyde's water, Dean well, he's had for him. He's leaned him out his saddle bow to catch his path through force. But the rush that ran in the clyde's water, Dean will he fee his horse. His brother stood on the other side, says, Fie, fie, will ye droon? Should I put your trust in your good steed, and he'll learn ye how to swim. Give him, give him, my ye brother, and tell my mother dear, to give nae mair or malison to a son that she bear. That night, when Lady Margaret woke, she's walking in a dream. So that dream that Willie was here last night, and I would not let him in. Lie doon, lie doon, my Maggie dear, lie doon and tack your rest. For it's nae an hour, nor a half an hour, since will he let these yets. But faced, faced, raise the lassie up, and faced, faced, pet she on. And she's a wa to Clyde's water, as fast as she can run. And she's good out yon high, high hill, and it's high, high blew the wind. And the louder that the lassie cried, it's louder blew the wind. The first in step, the lassie's teen, she stepped up to her knee. Ah, oh, na lass, Lady Margaret cried, Clyde's waters nae for me. The eastern step this lassie took, it took her till the chin, and the deepest part in Clyde's water she's found young Willie in. Oh, ye hae had a cruel mother, and I hae had another. And new will I in Clyde's water, like sister and like brother. So that's Clyde water. So you'll see that illustrates a lot of the things that I'd like to say about ballads. For people who don't know about ballads, ballads are these big, big story songs set to music. And um, they're usually, they're a bit Game of Thrones, if the truth be told. Um, they're usually about, um, there's sometimes a mystical element to them, as there is in this story, where um, Willie wants to go and see his true love and his mother has had a premonition and tries to divert him and says, don't go. And finally, she gives him her malice and or her curse. But he goes to see his true love and he has to cross the Clyde. 
and the weather is getting worse and worse. And then there's another villain. There's usually a villain, a good villain in a ballad. And the villain in this piece is Lady Margaret's mother, who pretends to be Lady Margaret and questions him about why he's there and says she's um, asleep or she's too busy entertaining gentlemen in her bower. So Willie sets off to ride back and by this time the Clyde's really in spate and he gets knocked off his horse and he 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 refers to his mother's um premonition telling him not to come this night and um then of course Lady Margaret herself wakes up discovers that Willie was at the door and her mother turned him away and it doesn't end well as many ballads don't. So you can see that there are big, big dramatic stories, usually about lords and ladies and highborn people. And they have a particular cadence and a rhythm. Very often ballads go like four beats, da 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 dee da dum, and then they go three, da 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 da, and they repeat that. Not all ballads do that, but it's very typical of ballads. So really, um, you can imagine for a young lassie growing up in Aberdeen, um, hearing these kind of stories sung was just amazing. And I think that's still what people pull, what pulls people into a love of ballads today. And of course, a lot of the Northeast ballads that I would have heard and would have learned when I was young, they've got fabulous melodies as well. So um, I'll sing you another one now. This one comes from the singing of the great Jeannie Robertson that I referred to earlier. But this one I picked because it illustrates another aspect of ballads is they travel they were usually transmitted many centuries ago from singer to singer from family to family um, and in Jeannie's words she used to put this very graphically my heed to your heed my voice to your voice my heart to your heart that's how ballad singers taught each other's songs. So it was kind of a cultural transmission, I would describe it as. Um, I didn't think that when I was 13 or 14, but that's my observation as a much older woman. And this particular um, ballad, um, Jeannie sang often, I heard her sing it, but I didn't learn it from her. I learned it by the way of Jimmy Hutchison, who is a great, great singer and learned many songs from Jeannie Robertson. He lives in Fife now, but came from the Western Isles. Um, and this is Jeannie's version of Matty Groves. And um, it illustrates the fact that ballads traveled geographically with the people who moved and often with traveling people themselves who would pass them on. This particular version, the tune, comes from a singer from the Appalachians called Jean Ritchie, who visited the northeast of Scotland and spent time with Jeannie in, I think, the 50s and 60s. So this is a great um, example of singers learning songs from other singers right almost like to the present day this tradition goes on and the songs and the melodies sometimes they remain absolutely true to the way they were passed on but sometimes singers change them because they like a different melody or they like a different way the song was sung so here it goes he's another one of these uh, great stories this is called matty groves yeah Holiday and a holiday, and the first you know the year, the people they are gathered round the gospel for to hear. Now the first to come in was a lot of young ladies, all dressed up in blue, and the next to come in was Lord Arnold's wife, the flower among the few, and when the meeting it was done she cast her eyes around and there she saw Matty Groves 
a riding through the tune. Come home with me, young Matty Groves. Come home with me, the necked. Come home with me, Matty Groves, and sleep in my arms this necked. Oh, I won't come home, and I can't come home. I won't come home from my life. For by the rings that are on your fingers, your Lord Arnold's wife. Well, it's true, I am Lord Arnold's wife. Lord Arnold's nay at him. For he's a wa into the fields, a drive in the the yearlings came, but a little peach boy was standing by, and hearing what was said, oh, he has vowed Lord Arnold would ken afore the sun was set, and in his haste to carry the news, he spent his back and ran, and when he come to the water's edge, he stayed a fishing and swam, and when he come to Lord Arnold's door, he stirred at the pen. Lord Arnold, he arose his cell to let the laddie in, saying, Is my bower a fallen doon, or does my castle burn, or is is my lady lector yet, or a doctor, or a son? Oh no, your bowers nae fallen doon, nor does your castle burn. But the next your lady lies asleep in the arms of Matty Groves. Now can this be the truth, he says, can that be the truth, says he. I'll give ye as much gay gout as your horse can carry awa. But if it be Sally, he says, can it be Sally, says he. I'll no take time for to make a gal. I'll hang ye fi on tree. Now Arnold he has teen his men and lined them in a row, and the order was to aw them that ne'er a horn should blow. But little Matty had a fring, determined he should hear. So he's petty his horn unto his lips, and he's blind beth loud and clear. Then up jump it, Matty Groves, then up jump it he, saying I must begin, I must begin, for I hear Lord Arnold's cry. Lie doon, lie doon, ye foolish boy, lie doon and keep me warm, for it's only in my feather shepherds fetching the yearlings him. Now little Matty lead him doon to he another sleep. When he awoke, Lord Arnold, he was standing at his feet, saying, How do you like my feather bed? And how do you like my sheets? And how do you like my lady wife? That that lies in your arms asleep. Guy will I like your feather bed, and will I like your sheets, but better I like your gaily dee that lies in my arms asleep. Get up, 
Get up, Lord Arnold cries, get up as quick as ye can. I'll never let it be said of me that I slew a naked man. Oh, I won't get up and I can't get up. I won't get up for my life. For ye he got twa beaten swords and I put a pocket knife we left through the time to our beaten swords they cost me deep in the purse but ye shall he the very best yin and i shall he the worst and ye shall strike the very first blow and strike it like a man and i will strike the very nice blow and I'll kill ye if I can. Well, little Matty struck the blow, wounded Arnold deep and sear. Lord Arnold struck the very nest blow, little Matty struck nae mere. Now, Lord Arnold, he hath teen his wife and sat her on his knee, saying, What he like the best o was, little Matty groves or me. Oh, we'll upspoke his lady fair, never heard to speak so free. Will I see not a kiss faded Matty's lips, then you and your finery. A grave, a grave, Lord Arnold cried to pet the lovers in. But lay my lady on the upper side, for she comes o oh, better kin. Say they buried Lady Arnold on the upper side, and Matty on the nigher. And do to her breast there grew a red rose, and do to his a briar. They grew and they grew to the steeple top till they could grow any higher. And they entwined in a true love's knot the rose among the briar. So again, you'll see the great dramatic story, the kind of, you know, the villain who is the little page boy. There's often a page boy villain. And um, you have to remember that back in the day, a lot of these marriages were arranged, mar arranged marriages. Um, lords and ladies wouldn't necessarily have married for love. Um, so a great story. And I'm going to move on now to the last of the ballads I'm going to sing you tonight. And this one takes us right back to the northeast of Scotland. Um, this one's called Edema Gordon. And the Gordons were basically, um, they were Catholics and supporters of Mary Queen of Scots at the time of Mary Queen of Scots. And it was a feud between them and the Forbeses. Um, the Forbeses were Protestants and supporters of um, who later became King James the Sixth, Mary Queen of Scots's son, who was raised Protestant. So there were all these feuds going between families, and they they did a good line in burning each other's castles down, um, and that's um, basically the gist of this story. Um, this this one is a ballad I learned relatively recently for me and it came from the singing of Alison McMorland who's another wonderful, she's an academic and also a great ballad singer herself. So if I find my note. It fell about the Martinmas time when the wind blew snell and cold. Cried Aid McGordon to his men, we mundros to some hold. 
Vertraut, vertraut, kreit es merry men, vertraut schau we gang tee. It's the Tauwies hus, that we man ride, and see yon fair lady. She thought it was her inked lord that she saw riding him, but it was the traitor Adam O'Gordon that recognised nor shame. Come down, come down, Lady Campbell, he cried, and gee who stay me, or else this very night I swear I'll burn ye and your bare knees three. I wanna come to the lady cried, I wanna gee up to ye, I wet na forsake my inked lord, that is safe far fae me. This lady fae the battlements, to a bullet she let flee. But she missed her mark with a garden, for it scarcely graced his knee. Lady Campbell, the garden cried, that shot will cost ye dear, and he has cut to his in jog to bring the faggots near. I wanna come to ye false garden, for laird nor yet for loon, nor yet for any rank robber that's come fi yach and then up and spak her youngest son sat on his nearest knee. Oh, open the door and let me out, for three kiss choking me. Oh, I wet gee up, my gout, she says, my cellar and my fee, for a blast o' the whistling winds to blow this reek fae me. Then Newton spak her daughter dear, she was bath jumping small. Row me in a pair o' sheets and throw me out the wall. So they rowed her in a pair o' sheets and they threw her out the wall. But on the point, O oh, garden sword, she's got a deadly fall. Then garden turned her hour and hour, and oped her face was white. A mighty spirit, this bonny maid, to be some man's delight. Oh, pity on yon castle high, that was bigot we stain and lime. And waited Lady Campbell herself, she has burned we are Bernie's nine. Three of them were married wives, and three of them were bairns, and three of them were little maidens that nearly in young men's arms. So another big dramatic ballad. And you can see lots of the elements of the big ballads in that song. Um, you know, 
murder and intrigue and it's just the way it was in the days gone by um, and that sort of entreaty in the last verse um, where the singer sings three of them were married wives and three of them were bairns but three of them were leal maidens true maidens that ne'er lay in young men's arms which made the the crime the heinous crime of um, burning them to death or stabbing them on the point of the garden sword and um, even worse if you knew the lore of the area and the lore of ballads that was a terrible crime that would be visited um, on the garden. So I think that's just about um, as much as I have to say and I'll maybe I'll say and sing so we'll maybe throw it open now for a few questions which I hope I'll be able to answer. Well, before that happens, Janice, I think everyone would be delighted to unmute and give you a super round of applause for your wonderful talk. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Right. Now, if you, well, there's a lot of people here, so I suggest that you use reactions down in reactions you could click it on and then you can see a, something called raise hand and oh, yeah. um, if you could use that that would be a lot easier